Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. The unsolved case of a former slave killed for witnessing a murder by a powerful man. In Liberty, Mississippi lived Louise Allain, a World War II veteran with a 7th grade education who always stood up for his rights. He was one of the few blacks in Liberty to own land and he ran a small timber business. Alain was known for always wearing a hat, which was his way of always telling people that he never lacked self-confidence. He never looked for trouble in whatsoever ways, but you all know as a man, trouble found him. On September 25th, 1961, Alain witnessed the murder of the leader of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee supporter Herbert Lee by Gwen Hurst, a powerful state legislator. Alain was walking past an old cotton gin when he saw the white legislator Hurst exchanging words with a local black activist Lee, who was unarmed but had an unlit cigarette in his mouth. Alain watched as Hurst shot and killed Lee, but he was pressured by local law enforcement officials into lying about the shooting and to say that it was self-defense. Alain testified that he had seen Lee holding a tire iron with the aim of hitting Hurst. The same authorities that coerced Alain to lie said they found a piece of iron under his body. The coroner's jury exonerated Hurst the next day. However, Alain was uncomfortable with the lie he had told. In his words, I did not want to tell any story about the dead because you cannot ask the dead for forgiveness. He told the student nonviolent coordinating committee organizer, Bob Moses. Alain decided to tell the truth at a grand jury hearing that would examine the corona jury's findings. He knew that he was about to risk his life by implicating a powerful white man in the murder of a black man. So he asked for protection from the federal authorities. But as you all can guess, none was provided. A document from FBI files cited by CBS News says Alain changed his story and expressed fear that he might be killed. The Student Unveiled Coordinating Committee organizer Moses even made arrangements for Alain to meet with Justice Department officials. But since Alain was denied protection, he decided not to testify. Still, officials in Liberty got to know that Alain was willing to testify. And that began years of harassment of Alain by authorities and white residents. Reports said local white residents stopped doing business with his lodging company. Deputy Sheriff Daniel Jones, whose father was a Ku Klux Klan leader, harassed and reportedly arrested Arain on trumped up charges and on one occasion he beat Alain outside his home. Hank Alain recently recounted to reports what happened that night Jones beat his father. He had handcuffed him, told him he was under arrest. So daddy asked him, can I take my heart? 
No, you can't go to get your heart. Daddy said, well, my son is on the porch. Can he bring me my heart? He drawn back. He took a flashlight and he struck my dad and broke his jawbone, handcuffed. Hank Allen said all that while well remembering what happened on the day of the event. His father, Alain, filed the complaints and testified before a federal grand jury in relation to the monstrous treatment meted out to him by Jones. However, his claims were dismissed and the harassment continued. The police have someone out of my house watching me all the time. End quote. Alain wrote in an affidavit he filed in 1962, highlighting some of the incidents. He pleaded for help, asking that his matter be investigated at once, because if not, this kind of intimidation will continue. But nothing was done about his situation. At one point, Alain wanted to leave liberty and go to work in another state, but he couldn't because of his outstanding debts and the fact that his mother was sick. Sadly, his mom passed away. He began plans to leave liberty after her demise. On January the 31st, 1964, the night before he was due to leave, the saddest thing happened. The worst happened. He was killed. Alain was ambushed after getting out of his truck to open the cattle gate that led to his property. His son, Hank Alain, found his dead body. To quote him, I didn't know why he would park the truck in the middle of the driveway and leave it like that. And I climbed up in the truck. The headlights were really dim. And when I went to step down out of the truck, I stepped on something. And that is how, when I stepped on my daddy's hand, he was lying up under the truck. Those are words of Hank Alain as he was reporting the death of his father. After Alain's murder, Jones, who had harassed and threatened Alain's life on several occasions, was made the lead investigator of his case. John told my mom that if Louise had just shut his mouth, that he wouldn't be lying there on the ground. He wouldn't be dead, Hunker Alain said. Alain's murder remains unsolved today. Jones was the main suspect, but he denied being behind the murder. In 2011, he told the reports that he wasn't involved in it and indeed he knew nothing about it. Recently, the family of Alain learned that he was sold for $20 while he was a child in 1926. Alain and his parents and the two siblings were kidnapped in Amit County, Mississippi and sold to the farm in Flacca, Louisiana for the sum of 20 US dollars. Anyway, can you imagine? He was sold for $20 and then killed for witnessing a murder by a powerful man. His case to date is still unsolved. Let me know what you think in the comment section, dear brothers and sisters. My name is Osi the Bone Child and thank you just so much for watching and subscribing to the African Diaspora News Channel. And for those of you that come and check out my channel, I also appreciate big time. I'll be seeing you in another video, but until then, bye-bye, take care.